Hey guys, Kirk Warner here and I'm joined today by... Charlie Merrill. Charlie is a licensed physical therapist here in lovely Boulder and we're gonna be talking about runner's knee today. We're gonna be talking about diagnosing, preventing, and all sorts of exercises. Today we're talking part one of a two-part series. Let's dig into it. So guys, if you missed it, Charlie and I did a series on plantar fasciitis as well, another really common injury. So if you missed it, click the banner up here to check it out. So guys, runner's knee is very common. It's a huge kind of buzzword in the runner's scene because it's such an amateur kind it's of- the gateway it's injury. It's the gateway injury as Charlie all, likes all to call it. All new runners get knee pain at some point. Um, so it's a super important conversation. And from conversations with Charlie, I've learned that it kind of focuses into some certain areas that we need to drive uh, most of our focus today. And that is going to be- uh, It's gonna be how the glutes help uh, support the hip how the hamstring helps support the hip and the knee, and then how those two muscle groups work together in a single leg context. Because after all, running is really just a series of jumps from one leg to the other. Great. Nice, so today we're gonna look at the glutes and hips and how they function. We'll give you a little test for that. We're gonna look at the hamstrings and how they function and give a test for that. And then the kind of big test is going to be how you perform on a single leg and how that uh, those two structures help support that. So let's dig into each. So we're gonna start with the glutes today. This is a test to see how well your glutes are firing. Uh, there's a benchmark that we'll share with you for this test and uh, Kirk's gonna demonstrate, so let's get started. So in order to do this test, uh, Kirk has a mini band. We'll uh, put a link at the bottom uh, where you can find this band. Super cheap. Uh, super cheap on Amazon. A lot of gyms have them too. Um, Kirk's gonna put this around his ankles to start. Both ankles. And we're gonna do three different movement patterns. The goal is to be able to do these continuously without stopping for 20 reps without getting super tired and without your technique falling apart, okay? First thing we're gonna do is walk sideways. So Kirk's gonna head that way. A few important uh, tips with this uh, movement. The feet have to be pointing straight ahead, if not slightly toed in. His upper body can't be leaning back and forth. It can't be leaning in order to um, sort of cheat away from him having to use his glutes. I want a little bend in his knees. I want a little bend in his hips so he's a little bit more natural. And he's taking as big a step as he's comfortable taking without his form changing. After 20 steps this way, we're gonna go back the other way. 20 steps. Always checking in with what are my feet doing? Because for a lot of people, they wanna to tend to toe out, especially when there's already some weakness. So we wanna make sure we're, we're taking smaller steps at first if the feet have a tendency to wanna to toe out. Once he's done 20 steps this way, he's gonna face straight ahead and he's gonna do a wide, sort of an ice skater step across the floor going forward. All the same rules apply. He's gonna come in and then step out. Come in and then step out. Feet point straight ahead, upper body's really still. Try to relax your arms a little bit so you don't, we do call this monster walks because you sort of feel like Frankenstein when you're walking across the floor, but I want you to be relaxed. I want your knees to be relaxed. Good, 20 steps this way, then we're gonna go backwards in the same movement pattern. The glutes, especially the glute medius, has a front and a back part, and this is gonna help you be able to train both of them. 20 steps backwards, he still hasn't rested, he's starting to feel the burn a little bit, right? Oh yeah. And then the third progression is also forward backward, but this time you're gonna do a wide swing and walk in a tight rope. The reason this is important is because running is a very narrow base of support. If you ever run in the snow, you'll see that your feet track kind of in a straight line. So we wanna train not only the glute's ability to be on one foot when it's right underneath you, but also you'd be able to balance a little bit as that leg swings around. So then we're going 20 steps this way, big wide swing, 20 steps backwards. <laughs> gonna challenge your balance in another way. So we're looking for a couple things. We're looking for good control and we're looking for Kirk to be able to do this without uh, too much fatigue. Although I'll say by the end of doing uh, this many reps, you're all gonna be tired. Nice job. Great. So the next muscle we're gonna talk about is the hamstrings. The hamstrings and the glutes both have a huge role in controlling the hip. And you're gonna get a sense in these videos that the hip um, really has a lot of say in what happens at the knee. So we're gonna share with you a test so you can get a sense for how well your hamstrings are working. Let's get started. 
The one piece of equipment you're going to need for this test is an inflatable ball. Um, the size isn't so important, but it should be relatively firm. Most gyms have these, uh, but if you can't find one, you can do this on a wood floor uh, wearing socks. So Kirk's going to lie on his back, and we're going to basically do some hamstring curls with his feet up on the ball. He's going to have his arms out to his side for balance, and I'm going to let him do this on two legs just to warm up and so I can explain the details for you. He's going to start with his hips off the ground. He's going to tighten his glutes. He's going to keep his abs engaged, which isn't really necessary, but it's really important. Um, as he bends his knees in to roll the ball towards his, his glutes, he's going to lift his hips so they stay as high as possible. That means his thigh is in line with his body as he comes back down, whether he's low or whether he's, whether he's high. So he's going to do a few reps of this. A few more uh, important tips. The feet should be together. They should be relatively parallel rather than toed in or toed out. So we work the hamstrings evenly on both sides. So once you've warmed up your hamstrings with a set of two leg curls, we're going to move to uh, doing this on one leg at a time. The goal here is for you to be able to get 20 continuous reps on each leg. All the same rules apply. Foot straight, hips stay high, heads on the ground. You can use your arms for a little bit of balance. If you can't get 20 reps continuously in a row, then you know you have some work to do, and we'll talk about that next. So we have one more test. This puts the hamstring strength and the glute strength you've developed into a more functional movement pattern. To do this test, we're going to need, um, in this case, a 20-inch box, which is about at Kirk's kneecap height. So you want to find something firm in your gym that's at the right height. Here's how we do the test. All right, so now that we found a, uh, a box the right height for Kirk, we're going to show you the details of the test. He's going to start in his right foot with it maybe half a, half a foot's distance away from the box. His other leg is going to be extended behind him, so the box needs to be uh, out of the way enough that he can get that, that other hip extended. Once he's in that position and he feels like he's got his balance, he's going to initiate the squat from his hip and he's going to sit back to the box. Notice his shoulders come forward as a counterbalance, and that part is really important that his hip and the muscles we just trained, the glutes and the hamstrings, are driving this movement rather than in his quad. So as he's sitting back to the box, his other leg stays extended. If the camera moves over to the front here, you're going to see that he has a straight foot. Just like the other test that we did, his foot is straight ahead like it would be when he's running. The, the points of performance that I want to point out that would show whether Kirk is uh, doing well with this or not, one is his knee needs to be able to stay lateral to his foot rather than caving in. If you look down and you see your knee caving, that's a problem, and most people can control this if they're very intentional about it. The other piece is his upper body. I want it to be vertical, just like it would be during his running stride, so that he's not leaning to the right, which is a very common compensation pattern when people have weakness on the stand side in their glutes or hamstrings. So if you could do a few more, Kirk, and just demonstrate the knees tracking lateral to the foot, the foot is straight, his upper body is really vertical, and most importantly, if the camera comes around to the side, he's initiating from his hips so that his butt goes back to aim to the box, he taps it down on the box, and his shoulders are staying forward as a counterbalance to that, rather than staying vertical. You want to show us that? Which is a much more quad-dominant type of squat. Maybe easier for you. So this is the test. I want you guys to work up to 20 reps per leg with good form. This is ideal if you have a mirror to look at so you can really get feedback about where your body is in space. And the cool thing about this exercise is by really focusing on the points of performance, you'll find you can really make a change quickly once you have the glutes and hamstrings strong. Those are our three tests. We looked at the glutes, the hamstrings, and the single leg stability stuff. We got a little test of each of those which included 20 reps of each. Now remember those are the hardest version that's your benchmark so this in part one is you testing your benchmark in part two we will we're going to lay out a progression of each of those movements so you're not starting with the test and you have a way to build up to having success ultimately with Great. each of those yeah so part two look for some progressions to work yourself up to be able to do that benchmark like we laid out Kirk's guys, gonna work on them too. I need to work on them too. <laughs> uh, guys, thank you for joining us in this video. Uh, there is a ton more stuff on our channel, so be sure to subscribe. If you have any questions for Charlie and I, let us know by hitting the comments below. And if you liked it, hit the like button. And we will catch you in the next video.